Hello everyone, and welcome back to Monsters of the Mind. As always, I'm your host, Mr. G. Today, we're talking about little creatures from the old war. That's right, today we're talking about... Gremlins. The word gremlin means to vex, but I have no idea what vex means. They're a species, they're generally seen as malevolent since uh, most of the stuff they do is considered pretty dangerous. They live anywhere where there's airplanes and they come from folklore of the war. The World War II to be exact, although some people think they might date back to World War I, but whatever. Most of the earliest depictions of gremlins depicted them like tiny humanoids. However, after the success of the movie Gremlins, most depictions of gremlins will be depicted as looking like small furry creatures, or small reptilian creatures. Gremlins have their origins in the British Air Force, where soldiers would often blame engine failures on gremlins cutting wires. Later on, gremlins became characterized as loving to mess with Air Force members, and several PSAs were made that warned you to not do certain things, or else gremlins would get ya. The story of gremlins ended up becoming known to the general public when in 1942, author Roald Dahl, most famous for writing Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, ended up writing a story about gremlins, which was actually the first book he ever wrote. This book was a decent success, and it brought gremlins to the public consciousness. After the war ended, gremlins ended up sticking around, still characterized as loving to tear apart planes, although nowadays gremlins are often shown as loving to mess with electronics in general. However, there is one question that should probably be answered in regards to gremlins. Were they ever unironically believed in, or were they always just a joke that no one was supposed to take seriously? And to be honest, I can't really find a good answer to that question. It's definitely possible that they were just a joke, but keep in mind, people can be very superstitious sometimes. So, the idea of a superstition from as recent as World War II, yeah, that's actually kind of believable. But, yeah, I don't have a good answer as to if gremlins were ever considered a real thing, so I'll let you come to your own conclusions. Vincent can't really talk right now. He's winning, he's winning, can't go on, can't go on. So let's just move on to the card. I noticed that they gave it wings. That's actually pretty clever, since if gremlins like to mess with airplanes, wouldn't it make sense for them to be able to fly, since if a plane took off while they were still on it, uh, would they just jump off and then plunge into the ground? No, I think wings actually make a lot of sense on gremlins. So that's actually a really cool design choice, not gonna lie. Yeah. In general, this card is basically just uh, the modern version of Gremlins, liking to mess with electronic things, and in general, just being mischief makers. So, yeah. Something I find funny is that on the back it says that Gremlins create computer viruses, and I find that and I find the image of a little Gremlin sitting at a computer just coding a virus to be weirdly funny for some reason. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's just a funny picture. So yeah, ten out of ten, I guess. Now, gremlins have appeared in plenty of things, so I'm just going to highlight three. As I mentioned earlier, author Roald Dahl made a book about gremlins, and Disney was actually planning to turn it into a movie. Unfortunately, it ended up getting cancelled, uh, mostly because uh, they realized that it was kind of hard to make creatures that tear apart planes for fun sympathetic. Twilight Zone had an episode where a gremlin tore apart an airplane while it was in flight, although here gremlins are portrayed as yeti-like creatures. And of course there's the movie Gremlins, which arguably was responsible for making gremlins really popular. Well that's all for this episode of Monsters of the Mind. Join us next time when we talk about the Shark Woman. Bye!